well, I don't know if he called everything in it, like uh, that he was going to leave school, but Jay Richardson, former Buckeye defensive end and our friend from uh, ABC6, was on with us on Bucks Line, and we had, uh, Jay, somebody ask the question about uh, Nick Bosa, and you were the one that was saying, uh, I really would be surprised if he comes back. And you know the family a little bit. First of all, from your knowledge of of Nick and Joey and his parents, how difficult a decision do you think this was for them to make, Jay? Hey, how you guys doing today? Doing good, doing good. Great. And, uh, yeah, you know, this whole situation has just been very, very tough on, uh, I'm, you know, Nick and I assume his, his family as well, just because, you know, you don't plan on getting injured in, in, in a season where you're, you know, really exploding and everyone has, has you projected as possibly the top rated NFL prospect in the country. That's just a tough thing to go through. And I think in, in Nick's situation, I think his father, um, you know, who's got a lot of experience with, with the NFL and also injuries and, and, and he had a rough go when, when he played, I think he's kind of looking at his experience and, and, you know, Joey being a little banged up, too, for the Chargers. And he's looking at Nick, and he's going, hey, look, son, I know you want to be there. I know you want to play, and I know you want to be there for your, you know, for your brothers. But the best thing for your future professionally is, is probably to, to go ahead and, and, and hang it up for the season and focus on rehab and getting healthy. And that had to be a difficult decision. Uh, are you surprised at all, Jay, that uh, he's – yeah, intending to withdraw from school and like completely separate himself, or do you think that that's uh, you know they're looking at the best interest for him? You know, I think for him that's just part of the process. I think he's he's got to fully uh, you know immerse himself in the rehab, and uh, he's got to get ready for the draft. It's no secret he'll be declaring and he'll be probably a top five pick, you know, maybe a top two pick. So I I don't think he wanted to compromise that by trying to come back and, and, and play through a, a, a truly difficult injury. Anytime you're talking about an abdominal tear with a muscle wall tear, that's something that, you know, that could be a six to nine month deal. So I knew when it happened and they said, you know, the nature of the injury, I, I knew I, it, it'd be unlikely for us to see him again. But yes, for him to withdraw from school, I think took some by surprise, but I think that's just part of their process. So Jay, play the hypothetical with us. Uh, Matt put a question out there on Twitter in regards to, Ohio State running the table, winning a Big Ten championship, potentially even a national championship. Where do you mm-hmm. stand on Nick Bosa getting a ring if that were to happen? Hey, listen, you know, uh, Anderson Verajal got a ring <laughs> with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And he, was, and he was, you know, sent back. And so, hey, if, if you were on the team, if you made it through training camp, you know, and, and, and he was a part of that TC. I mean, the guy still had a good handful of sacks and, and caused a fumble. I think he even had a touchdown uh, in, in only a couple of games of action. So he contributed to the season. He contributed to this program. You know, he deserves to reach whatever benefits that, that this program gets. I agree. Now, as a teammate, if you're in the locker room now, how, how do you feel? Do you feel like, you know, Nick abandoned his post? He's a captain? Or, I mean, do you totally understand and you wish him the best? Where, where do you stand? As a teammate... And I've played with guys who, who had to put their professional interests, um, you know, ahead of the school's interests, and I completely get it. As a teammate, any one of those guys in that locker room, if they could trade places with Nick, you know, abdominal tear and all, I promise you they would, and they'd probably make the same decision he's making if they're being honest with themselves. So I don't think anyone thinks he's abandoned them. He's a Buckeye brother, and he will be for life, and that's just how it is once you enter this brotherhood. Um, I just think, you know, schools are always going to do what's in the best interest of the school. That's their job. Uh, players have to do what's in the best interest of themselves. That's also their obligation to themselves and their families. So I think every guy in that locker room is going to understand that, and I, I assume he'll try to be uh, present on the sidelines if he can once he's healthy and, and be as supportive as he can, and all those guys keep in close contact with Nick, and they love him. So. I don't think any guy feels that way. Visiting with Jay Richardson, former Buckeye defensive end, uh, former NFL defensive end, and also of uh, ABC6 joining us talking about the Nick Bosa injury. Jay, you said, and you said it last week on Bucks Line too, that the minute he went down, you were like, I don't know if we're going to see him again. Um, the nature of that injury and the core muscle injury for, I mean, you were a defensive end, for defensive end, yeah. why is it so debilitating? Why did you kind of know right away that that might be the last time we see him? 
Yeah, I've played with a good handful of guys who've had, you know, sports hernia injuries, who've had, who've had abdominal tears and injuries in that region. And you got to realize, you know, if your body from head to toe is like a chain, it's only as strong as its weakest link. Your core kind of holds all that together, no matter, you know, how strong your shoulders and arms are or how strong your legs, you know, and power base is. If your core is weakened, you're not going to be worth much out there as a player just because you have no balance. And I think for a defensive end, as much twisting and turning and as exploding as a defensive end has to do and also taking on blocks and double teams, it's just un, it's unrealistic that he was going to be able to come back and be at all effective with an injury of that nature. And I think the moment I saw it, I, go, I went, oh, God, I hope it's not his abs. And sure enough, you know, that's what it was. And I said, yep, that's it. I don't, you know, I didn't want to come out and say it like that, but I'm, I truly felt like his season was over. And unfortunately, it is. Okay, without him now, the Buckeye defensive line, uh, how do you look at it, Jay? Now, the good news is Jonathan Cooper, who missed last week, and I think that Ohio State missed him, uh, he's going to be back. Yeah. Malik Harrison at linebacker is going to be back. But uh, uh, now we know. I mean, I, I guess they've dealt with this already, but uh, now we know he's not coming back. Is this defensive line, is this defensive unit good enough to, as Stan said, win a Big Ten title, get to the playoff, win a national title, or without Nick Bosa, is that the difference maker for this team? Um, well, you know me, I'm always going to call it how I see it. And based on what I saw last week uh, against Minnesota, no, this defensive unit as constructed and, and the way they're playing right now is not good enough. I don't think to – they might be good enough to, to win a Big Ten championship, but they're not good enough to make any sort of a, a dent in the, in the college football playoffs. And that is the, for a multitude of reasons. You know, the defensive line, yeah, they'll have to alter the rotation a bit. It'll be nice to have uh, Cooper back. I spoke with him last week. He's feeling much better. He can't wait to get back out there. He's a young guy uh, from Gehanna that's going to be a really good player uh, once he gets a little bit more consistent time on the field. And then you've obviously Chase Young, who's probably benefited the most from, from Joey, I'm sorry, from Nick Bosa not being there because, man, the biggest deterrent for Chase Young getting sacks was Nick Bosa. He was always there right before him. Yeah. And, you know, now to have a, kind of a clear path to the quarterback, we've seen him kind of be able to emerge as a dominant, dominant player. But the defensive backs, have got to learn to make plays on the football when the ball's in the air. And, and Coach Shiano has to, you know, let go of some of his stubborn ways and just play a little bit more zone and, and, and give these young defensive backs some relief. They're, you know, there's some talented kids out there, but they just, they're playing, you know, a lot of man coverage. And for young, for young guys who don't have that kind of experience, that's a tough, tough call. And that's a tough task. And you're seeing them repeatedly you know, uh, have penalties because they're not getting their head turned around. They're not playing. They're not making plays on the football, and they're really, really struggling. You're seeing, you know, teams just pass on us and, and, and moving the ball in chunk yardage style, which is very tough to see. Jay, I, I disagree a little bit with you, so I want to get your thoughts here. Obviously, you played on the defensive side. To me, there's only mm -hmm. been one stat that's important for defense, and that's scoring defense. And if you look at what Ohio yep. State's defense has done, obviously we've given up yards. Kind of reminds me of some New England defenses where, you know, very loose 20 to 20, but they're, they're not giving up a bunch of points. I mean, a lot of teams have been very productive in the first half and then shut out in the second half. You don't think that with that formula that they can compete with the Clemson and, and Notre Dames of the world? No, not at all. Um, here's what you got to understand. On a long enough timeline, you compile this body of work on film, and teams learn how to attack you differently. And you got to also understand, Ohio State hasn't played great football teams yet. You know, they played a couple solid teams, TCU. You know, they played a, a solid Penn State team who, you know, just went down last week. So, um, you know, that that's questionable there. But they haven't played any great football teams yet. Yeah, but you, and they've been can you struggling. Say, can you say that about? Clemson? Can you say that about Alabama? Oh, can you say that about Georgia? You can say that about all of them. I mean, I think Georgia's played much better competition than anyone. Alabama's played a bunch of cupcakes, and Clemson's in the ACC, so they're going to have a cakewalk. But the reality of it is, with, with Ohio State as presently constructed defensively, I mean, because the offense can carry this team to the college football playoffs. I think Dwayne Haskins is beyond the, the real deal. I think he should be the first quarterback taken. But that, that being aside, talking about the defense, on a long enough timeline, Teams start to get your formula. And if Michigan, for instance, you know, can find a way to, to slow down our offense, we're going to be in trouble defensively because, you know, the, the, the recipe for beating Ohio State's defense is on film right now. You spread them out, pass the ball, put them in, in compromising situations and change their run fits and attack them. 
uh, head on, and we struggled. And it wasn't so much just the coverage, too. If you really watched the offensive and defensive line last week, Minnesota's offensive line pushed our defensive line back. Yep. And they controlled the line of scrimmage. That's a problem. Yep. I don't care what competition you're playing. That is a problem. That will get you beat at some point in the season. And, you know, this Purdue night game makes me nervous. You know, Purdue's always a weird game, especially at Purdue, especially at night. And, you know, his history tells the story there. Hey, Jay, uh, we really appreciate your expertise and uh, taking a few minutes for us. And uh, we'll be looking for you on ABC6. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks so much, guys.